Canadians Maple Leafs, Mario. Let's talk about it. Maple Leafs beat the Canadians in Montreal two to one last night. Uh, this was also a pretty good game, Mario. It was pretty. It was more on the defensive side of things. It really wasn't a high scoring game. Um, but let's get to the stats real quick. I'll start off with uh, the Maple Leafs. Uh, William Nylander, he had himself a goal and uh, two shots on goals. Uh, Morgan Riley, he had, also had a goal and uh, three shots on goals. And uh, Mitch Mourner, Alexander Kerfoot, and TJ Brody all had an assist. And uh, Jack Campbell, Mario, he did a really good job back there. He had 28 saves, had 29 shots made, which is a save percentage of 96 or 0.966. Uh, now let me get to Canadians. Nick, uh, Nick Suzuki is the only one that made the goal, and he also had three shots on goals. Uh, Corey Perry and Tomas Tatar, he also they also had themselves an assist. Um, and Carey Price saved 27 out of 29, which is a percentage of 93 or 0.931. Now let me get to the box score, Mario. Uh, both, both teams, like I mentioned, had 29 shots on goals. Both teams had 50% at the faceoff, so they were, really, they were pretty much even at that. Um, both teams did not make any of their power plays. Um, the Maple Leafs had four of them. They didn't make any of them. Canadians had three. They didn't make any of them. Uh, penalty minutes, the Canadians at the Canadians at 12 and the Maple Leafs at 10. Hits-wise, the Canadians had 37 and the Maple Leafs had 28. Blocks-wise, the Maple Leafs had 17 with the Canadians 14. Uh, giveaways, uh, the Maple Leafs had nine. And um, the Maple, uh, the Canadians at 13 and the takeaways, both teams at three. So when I look at this, Mario, offensively, it was extremely even. And there's one thing I got to point to. Carey Price made, I think, one of the nicest saves I think I've ever seen in my life. Like, it was it, it was mad. I, I put the highlights in the description down below. I'm pretty sure it'll be in there. But if not, I'll also leave a, I'll also leave a link to a video of that save. It was absolutely incredible. I, I've never seen anything like it. It was just that amazing. Well, overall, Mario, when I look at this, the Canadians aren't giving up. You know, this was a defensive game when you look at it, really. Um, both teams shot 29 times. Both teams had a 50% at the faceoff. So they're pretty much even at that point, you know. They're pretty they're pretty much even offensively. Uh, defensively, they're pretty much right there, too, you know. Aside from game two, um, pretty much, Mario, they, these two teams have been on top of each other. Um, Toronto leads the series 2-1, to one, so – in Montreal, so I do expect them to take at least two from uh, the Canadians in Montreal. Uh, but there's one thing that's killing both teams, and that's the power plays. You know, I, I don't, I'm not even sure if the Maple Leafs have, or I don't even recall if the Maple Leafs have made a power play goal in this playoffs yet. If they haven't, then they need to figure that out because they're going to be facing teams. You know, whoever wins this series faces the Winnipeg Jets, who just swept the Edmonton Oilers. Which I'll get to that. We'll, we'll get to that video in a minute. We got a lot to talk about on that one. But right now, um. The Maple Leafs need to capitalize on those on those power plays. Same thing with the Canadians; they need to do the same thing. You know, you can't you can't be missing out on such a great advantage like that. Um, overall, Mario, though, it, it's looking it's looking to be a pretty even series. You know, both teams are on top of each other offensively, defensively, they're right there as well. It's just I think the power plays are killing both teams. So, um, with that being said, not really a lot here to say. Um, best of luck to both teams. Again, I'm not really I'm, I'm not really a big fan of these two teams, so I really don't care who wins this series. But best of luck to them anyways, and we'll see what happens, Mario. Yeah, um, just to uh, answer like a little bit of like curiosity that you had, the Toronto Maple Leafs in the five to one win that they had, they scored uh they scored two out of six for the power plays. But here's the interesting fact: the Canadians have not scored one power play this whole series. Oh, so I got the two mixed up. Yeah, but regardless, both of them are not capitalizing on power plays. I mean, obviously, you can see that. So when I look at this game, it was a very defensive game. And like you said, offensively, it was very even as well. Here's what I look at, Nate, okay? It, it's it's very weird, okay? Because the way I look at this is, is this way right here, okay? I point to the second period, okay? And in the second period, the Toronto Maple Leafs outshot the Canadians 20 to 8, okay? And in that second period... The Maple Leafs, uh, Nylander ended up scoring. Uh, Suzu Suzuki on the Canadians ended up scoring, and, and Riley ended up scoring for the uh, Maple Leafs again. All that in the second period, okay? The third period comes, okay? The Canadians outshoot them 15-2, to two, all right? Now, one goal in the third period. This is what I mean. You're aggressive, but, like, sometimes it's just no game plan, or you have a game plan that doesn't work. So it's up to the coaches to kind of switch that up. Carey Price played a great game. You know, uh, same thing with Campbell. Jeff Campbell had a great game. Again, 29 shots for uh, 
both teams. So it was a very good defensive game. That's why the game was two to one. But at the end of the day, you know, Maple Leafs just did a little bit more. One guy on this team who has really stepped up in this series is Nylander. You know, Nylander has been three games. He has three goals. And um, when I'm really looking at it, Nate, and even, and even Mitch Marner, Mitch Marner had three, has three assists in this series. So I got to give him a lot of credit as well. But one thing that the Canadians did good that they can take into the next game is they did not let off Austin Matthews get involved, Nate. They just didn't let him get involved, you know? No goals for Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews, he, um, right here, he, he had six shots on goal, and none of those shots capitalized, you know? So I think they did a good job of, I think the goalie did a good job of keeping Austin Matthews at this game. But that's the guy that you got to watch out for right there is Austin Matthews. You've got to keep him out of this series, okay? Because, you again, it's unfortunate what happened with John Tavares. You know, I'm wishing him a speedy recovery. But as Canadian, as the Canadians, if I'm looking at this and I see that John Tavares is not playing, take advantage of getting rid of Austin Matthews, you know? And, again, this really, again, this really sucks for the Canadians because now it's just another game that, that John Tavares could be available for, you know? If you were to beat them, then the time frame for John John Tavares coming back is very slim. And not only that, if they need him, he's going to end up coming on the ice, and he's probably not going to be at 100%. But now, since the Toronto Maple Leafs are extending the series, John Tavares has a little more time to heal and recuperate and come back and come back more healthy. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if Canadians came up 2-1, right, and in the next game they were up 3-1, well, Tavares might not be 100%, but he might say to himself, like, hey, I got to come into this game anyway. You know, when he's not 100%, therefore, he's not that big of a factor. But because the Maple Leafs are ahead now, you know, and because it kind of gives more time for Tavares to have a, a more of a speedy recovery or to get more healthy, John Tavares, if he ever comes back into the series, he could be a little more healthy than what he, he would have been if the Canadians were ahead. But the Canadians are not ahead, you know. So I'm looking at this, and the one thing we got, you got to do for as long as you can is take Austin Matthews out of this series. You know, Mitch Marner is the other guy. Mitch Marner has been doing a great job for them as well. Get Mitch Marner out this series as well because Mitch Marner has been doing good. Now, again, there's Nylander. He's been doing a great job. Um, he's been doing a great job for the Maple Leafs, so I got to give him a lot of credit as well. But, yeah, Nate, overall, Overall, I think the Canadians need to just get those stars, Mitch Marner and Austin Matthews, and keep them out the game. And then last but not least, Will Nylander, you got to, I say, put a little more defense on him to slow him down. As for the Maple Leafs, what I'm doing against the Canadians is exactly what you're doing here. Great defense. Past two games, the Canadians have only scored two goals. Past two games, they only scored two goals, and you guys have scored seven. You guys have outscored them seven to two in the past two games. So keep doing what you're doing, you know? I would like to see more offensively from the Toronto Maple Leafs next game, you know, but defensively, you're doing a great job with the Canadians. Um, so with that being said, I wish both teams the best of luck. Next game is going to be game four in it's it's in um it's in Montreal tomorrow at seven. Montreal. Okay, so this is a great great chance for the Canadians to get a win at home. And this is a great chance for Toronto to take over the series three one. So can't wait to see this game. We'll see what happens. And with that being said, I wish both teams the best of luck.